The next part of Life in Modern Britain starts looking at the media and how it influences us. We also look at how it can hold people in power to account um, and also the issues that comes with using the media. So there's different types of media around the uh, mind map in the middle of the screen and you need to think about why there might be good and bad as a source of information. So getting our news. So for example, if you think about the internet, it's brilliant. You can Google anything at the touch of your fingertips. You can find out any news you want. The bad thing is that the internet's not regulated at all. So there's so much fake news out there um, that causes probably more problems. Uh, newspapers, they're brilliant. You can get a range of them. They have to have been regulated. Um, so they should be to some extent truthful. However, newspapers can be politically biased and so on. Okay, so loads of key terms on here you've got to know. Traditional means old, so traditional media is your old fashioned media, things like newspapers, TV and radio. New media or e-media is the internet, electronic media. Citizen journalists are when um, what happens now, regularly people will upload videos to the internet of current affairs and things that are happening. So, for example, if you see some crime being committed, you might record it and put it on social media. And very often it's where we're getting our, our most recent news from. The thing you do need to realise about newspapers is that they all have a political bias. So, for example, the Sun, the Daily Mail are quite right wing, whereas the Guardian's quite left wing. Um, so they are allowed to have a political bias. It depends who owns the paper and who runs it. TV is not allowed to be biased by the law, however so it is to a certain extent. Free press, press or freedom of the press means that the government don't control the media. Um, it's a massive part of being in a democracy is to have a free press because if the government rules it then you won't the media won't be able to question them Ofcom is what regulates TV so if you've got a complaint about the television you go to them the PCC used to be what would regulate newspapers how was that? Under the Leveson Inquiry of 2014, it got replaced by the IPSO, the Independent Press Standards Organisation, that's got a few more powers and controls. Cens censorship is where you do not allow things to be shown. So, for example, in a lot of dictatorships, things like China, places like China, they will censor the internet so you can't get on there. And then propaganda um, means they're trying to make you think in a particular way. So they'll portray politicians, for example, in a particular way uh, to encourage you to vote in a particular way. OK, so freedom of the press is really important when it comes to our, our democracy and civil liberties. Um, we know that the media is only ever going to tell us a partial truth. So. For example, they're going to show the government perhaps in a good light. We expect a free media to present us the truth, but sometimes obviously it's not. So, for example, some governments, particularly in dictatorships and non-democratic countries, are going to censor the media. They don't want you to see what's going on in the rest of society, in the rest of the world. They want you just to think about their way of doing things and not question it. The free press, even in a democracy, might not give us accurate information. They might exaggerate things because they want to sell more newspapers. They might exaggerate or lie so that they can put across a particular political viewpoint. So, times when the media's had to be in trouble. J.K. Rowling, the Harry Potter author, um, went on a private beach on holiday with her family. Um, a journalist snuck onto the beach and took photos of her eight-year-old daughter uh, and put them in the newspaper. So, obviously, that wasn't on. Went against her human rights to family life and personal life. So, the newspaper had to apologise. Love Island, if you remember Caroline Flack, she got in trouble for attacking her partner. Uh, the newspapers were quite relentless in their follow-up of that story, as was social media. There was an awful lot of nastiness on there and she ended up killing herself. Ben Stokes is an England footballer. Um, just before it was either the Ashes or the football, the, uh, sorry, he's an English cricketer, um, just before the Cricket World Cup or something in 2019, um, a massive family secret was reported about uh, the father 
who I believe had murdered somebody. Um, huge personal problems for his family. His mom, it, it dragged up a history that didn't need to be dragged up. And why was it brought up? It didn't add to the to anything to um help the public it wasn't about you know electing somebody and needing to know a, a secret of theirs it was just an invasion of his privacy and then the news of the world was a sunday newspaper um it is now defunct it is now shut down because of phone hacking that happened um the news of the world hacked into a missing 13 year old's phone thinking maybe they could get a scope so they listened to her messages uh on her phone which made her parents think because her voice messages were emptied it made them think perhaps she was alive and she wasn't she'd actually been kidnapped and murdered so um this then launched the leveson inquiry into the processes that the news of the world had done um and even though the leveson inquiry said right we're not going to be government regulated we still have to have a free press it did lead to the formation of the ipsr So the IPSO and um, human rights then. So we have to have privacy. People have to have a personal life. Um, we also have to have a free press because of democracy. So one more question for you. We've just said it. And then we've got a four mark question. So this talks about the way that the media is censored in China. So basically, China's a one party state. There's no other political parties. Um, the government's ta tactics involve strict media controls using monitoring systems and firewalls, closing publications or websites, holding trials and jailing dissident journalists, bloggers and activists. Foreign companies such as Google have battled with the Chinese government over the access Chinese citizens have to the Internet and the data that they store. The Chinese government also tries to restrict material that is put on the Internet and the ability of their citizens to search for some information. So this is a compare question. Compare the situation in China described in source B with how the media are treated in the British government. So you need two points from there. Say what it is, compare it to the UK and say how and why that's different. So, for example, I might look at the fact that um, dissident journalists are um, jailed. So if you say something against the government, you are jailed. We don't do that in this country. In this country, we've got a free press. It's linked to our democracy, um, one of our British values and the way our society is. Our journalists have to hold the government to account. Um, that's part of living in a democracy. The other thing I might say is that in China, they'll restrict searching on Google. Again, we don't have that in this country. We have got a free press. You are able to use Google. You are able to, to look for what you want. OK, and then just have a think about um, should there be greater state control over the media, link it to the government being a democracy in this country.